This is a demonstration on how to connect Visual Studio 2013 to Subversion using the Agent SVM plugin. Now, the first thing you need to do to make this happen is to actually go to the Tools menu and in the Options, we select the plugin, the Source Control plugin. And right here, we have to select Agent SVM. Naturally, the, the software has already been installed, um, but now we're asking Visual Studio to use that plugin, which was installed from the, the installer file. And the other thing we want to do is we actually want to go to the Agent SVN uh, configuration dialog. We can get to that using the Advanced button. You can also get to that through the desktop, but the Advanced button is also uh, a way to get there. And here we have the different configuration details for the plugin. The general options define how the plugin works, whether it uses locks, um, whether it marks files as read only when they're not checked out. Obviously, they're all configurable. Um, some status options options basically uh, by default it, uh, it will use a cached version of the status just to add a bit better performance. Um, an option to use an external difference tool. In this case, it's using WinMerge as an external difference tool. Um, it has a trunk option. Um, in this particular case, it's going to postfix every project with a trunk. Um, you have the option to prefix them if you like. Or you even have the option of using the no trunk option, in which case all the um, the URL that will be left up to the user. How, how the URL is marked with trunk is left up to the user. And finally down the bottom here is the default uh, repository location. Um, now, in, in this is only the default location of the repository. It's basically where, and, and generally it'll point to your uh, repo. Now, you can select the different types of protocols to, to define the location of the repo. Uh, and depending on the, the protocol, you will then put in the URL details up, up in the top. In this particular case, we're just going to use the default, which is the file, local file um, protocol. And I recommend it um, when first starting out to use this option because it just lets you play with the... Um, the plugin and get a feel for how it works and then once you have once you're comfortable with it then you just point it to your real repo by picking the correct protocol and filling in the url details but while while evaluating it it's easy just to create a, a local file and make that your repository so in this particular case we're going to make this folder we're going to create a repository in this folder location um, for use with this example so if we now go and apply those changes we're presented with this dialog, and basically the the plugin Agent SVN is saying it, it, there's no repo there, which makes sense since we we didn't. Uh, this is just some random folder, but it's giving the option to create one. So we go yes, let it let it create a repo in that location. Now normally, of course, if you actually if it was meant to be a, a proper location, you'd go no, and you'd just then reconfigure the options to make sure that they're pointing to a, a an actual repo. But in this case, we know there's not going to be a repo there, and we'll just let it create one. So it's now created it, and we'll apply those changes. Now we can actually test that because if we go to the um, um, Tortoise SPN, this is the same repo location, and sure enough, here we have we have our repo created for us. Um, right. So next thing we'd need is uh, something to actually um, add to source control. So if we create a new project, we'll create a, a ASP.web app, um, and we have the option here to add it to source control. So we'll, we'll let it do that. Um, if you didn't do that, you could add it later on. Um, this, there are several ways to add things to source control from inside of Visual Studio. So, But in this particular case, we'll, we'll just create a project and add it to source control. So we'll go OK on that. And we'll make it an MVC and add in all the options, even the unit testing. And we'll hit the OK button. So at this point, it's now creating the, the new project. And in the same process, it's actually going to be adding it to source control. So we'll let it go. And there we have it. Um, over here in the uh, Solution Explorer, we can see that all the items are 
got the little lock indicator to say that they're in source control. Uh, we can also go back to our repo browser. And if we refresh this screen, we can see there's our web application. And there's that option, which is prefix star postfix with the trunk. And there's our different sets of files, all added to source control. Next. So now you can use the, the source control menus from inside of Visual Studio to actually control those, these files. So for example, if we go to the uh, any particular file, use the checkout for edit menu option, we can now see that the icon changes to a tick to indicate that the file has been checked out. We can confirm that by going back to the to the controller section of the where did I, which file was it? Oh, do I have to refresh this? Let me see if I've got the right. It's in the controller's home controller. Te oh, it's a test file. Okay, so I'm in the wrong project. If I go back to our, our tests project, and you can see it's now got the lock on up there. Okay. Um, so again, if I, I'll undo that one because I didn't actually want to check out the test, but I'll undo the checkout, and it's saying to it, it will undo that the file that we have checked out. And we go yes, and I can come, once again confirm that by going back here and refreshing this, and you can see it's taken the lock off there. But I was in the wrong project. I want to go to this project. So if I go to the controller in here and just say check this file out. Again, it's ticked it to say it's checked out. Uh, now let's make a small change. And there you go, we've written a little comment. We can use the compare option to compare the file against what's in the repository. And it sees our small change. Naturally, we can check that in. So if we check that in, give it a comment. The icon changes back to the lock, indicating we don't have the, the file checked out. Um, naturally, if we do a compare, it's identical to that in the repository. We can also use the history option. And you can see that it's, it's recognized our last change. We can do a difference of those two changes. And away you go. It's showing us the last change that we made. So that's basically a very quick example of how the plugin lets um, Visual Studio talk to Subversion uh, in basically using the, the, the source control options that are that are built into the IDE. So all of the source control options um, work uh, seamlessly, uh, but it will be talking to the subversion repository.